Our speaker this morning is Abby Miles, who needs no introduction, but give a, can give a one anyway. You, uh, you've just finished your theology degree, is that right? Subtly raising everyone's expectations for your talk, so no pressure. Um, Abby's just finished her theology degree at um, Cardiff Uni. Uh, she is the daughter of the lovely Jan and Phil Miles. I'm really excited to have her speaking with us this morning. Um, but before we hand over to her, let's have our reading from Ben. So our reading this morning, I'm sure it will come from the screen, but it's Matthew 14, and it's titled, Jesus Walks on Water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Beth. I only drafted her in like five minutes ago, so she's an absolute legend. Um, Yes, as Pete said, my name is Abby. Um, he literally stole my entire introduction, so that's fun. Um, but I, yes, I've just graduated from Cardiff Uni. Terrifying. I still feel about 18, but it's fine. Um, I grew up in the Bay. I've lived here for nearly 22 years now. Crazy. Um, grew up in Torquay. My wonderful parents, Jan and Phil, go to this church. If you don't know them, you should know them, because they're legends. They're just legends. Um, yes. Um, Should we pray before we go any further? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, Lord, thank you so much um, that we just get to gather together today around your word. Lord, would people just have open hearts uh, ready to receive what you want them to hear? In Jesus' name, amen. Now, growing up in the Bay, you're often taught the dangers of the sea. I don't know if you've ever been taught this, but like, you know, the sea is a dangerous place where bad things happen. You can have fun, but within a limit of fun. And so, you know, we did swimming lessons from a very young age. And um, I don't know if you've ever had a scary boat experience. My mum's laughing now because she knows the scary boat experience that I'm going to talk about. We were, I'll set the scene for you. I was about eight years old. All right. I, um, we were in Cornwall camping. We go every year with my cousins. And the night before this experience, we were in a fish and chip shop where the best things happen in fish and chip shops um, on Poles F Beach. And my uncle saw a sign for fishing trips. And he was like, sounds like a great idea with like 10 kids. Let's do it. So the next day, well, that night, actually, my mum gets really bad, badly seasick. So never invite her on your boat because she will be sick. Um, So we were in Tesco's looking for different remedies that you can get. So she had like teas, tablets. There are bands that you can get now patches. I don't really know what what else, but she tried everything. I'll give you a hint. It didn't work. None of it worked. Um, But we go down to the harbor and um, we are met by our captain for the day, Rodney, right? Important fact to know about Rodney, because this is how he will now be formally known. Rodney only had one eye. So he is one-eyed Rodney, was, is the name of, of our captain. And he had a little friend with him who can't have been older than 16. 
Um, and the boat was called the Optimus Prime 2. Something had happened to number one, and we had no idea what, but we can assume it wasn't good after our trip. And um, we get on the boat, and bearing in mind, I'm like eight at this point. We had younger children than me, but there are like no life jackets involved here, right? There's no safety briefing, there's nothing. I'm working with international students at the moment. And if I had to put them on a boat with no, you know, with just no safety briefing, I would genuinely fear for their lives. And I think we were the same at that time. And so we go out into the sea and we begin to fish. Well, some people fish, others of us just do what resembles fishing and definitely isn't. And then very suddenly, the winds just got very, very like strong and the waves were very high. And my mum starts throwing up. My, my uncle starts throwing up. All of the adults are just being sick. The kids are literally hanging on to the side. Rodney goes into his little cabin thing and brings out his overalls. And he's like, oh, first time I've had to put my overalls on all year. We're like, thanks, Rodney. We feel so much better now. Um, and yeah, but I can confirm that despite a lot of fear and trauma, we did get home safe. We actually fought, caught four mackerel. Yeah, they tasted disgusting. It was the worst trip ever, but we still talk about it uh, today. It's a staple of the family trip, you know, oh, where's what? Maybe we should go and see one-eyed Rodney again. We've got no idea where he is or what he's doing. I will never get back on that boat. He's probably on like Optimus Prime four or five now, I would imagine. Um, <laughs> And in our Bible passage today, the disciples are sent out into really choppy waters by Jesus. This passage is from the Gospel of Matthew. And just prior to this, another miracle has just taken place called the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus has just fed 5,000 people. There's food left over. It's this massive miracle because he did it with like five loaves of bread. It's insane. And um, everybody has really high expectations of what's going to happen. They really think that Jesus is going to take over as like their earthly king. And so there's sort of a moment of sort of panic with Jesus where he's like, okay, the disciples need to go away and I need to go away. And so instead of celebrating in public of the amazing thing that he's done, he sends the disciples away and he retreats to be with God. And then we see that later that night, he went back out to the disciples and he walked on the water to them. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody was coming out to me walking on the water, I would freak out. I'd be like, well, what is going on here? And that's exactly what the disciples did. They're shocked and they don't recognize him. In fact, they take him for a ghost. Uh, but Jesus says, take courage, it is I. Um, and then Peter asks Jesus to call him out of the water. And Jesus does. And Peter's like, oh no, I've got to actually do it now, and steps out of the boat. And I wonder today if Jesus might be calling some of us out into choppy and unknown waters. Perhaps today you feel like you are in the middle of a storm, like the winds are against you, you're really tired and weary like the disciples would have been, and you're struggling to recognize Jesus in the middle of the storm. Like the thing that I love about this story is that Jesus doesn't calm the storm before he calls Peter out of the boat. So, you know, he, he calls Peter out into the unknown. And it really doesn't strike me as an easy move for Peter. In fact, notice none of the other disciples bother to do it. They're all like, no, I'm comfortable in my boat. I'm going to stay here. But you see, Peter took courage and stepped out in faith. He left the comfort of the boat in order to be closer to Jesus and to do the thing that Jesus wanted him to do. And I really relate um, to Peter in this passage at the moment. I'm going through some life changes at the moment. You know, life is changing. I've finally left education. Yes, woo, I'm done with it now. Done with it for a long time. Um, <laughs> and I won't lie to you, this lie has been um, a struggle. As we were singing um, the final song, that idea of Jesus being like your closest friend and your comfort has really, really relates to me in the last year. You see, if you'd asked me last year what I was going to do with my life, I probably would have told you that I didn't really know, but that I would like to stay in Cardiff, that I'd like to uh, live with my closest friends and just generally have a very comfortable and easy life. 
But you see, God's taken me on a journey of realizing that uh, the expectations that I have for my life do not always line up uh, with his plans. And that true faith in him requires obedience and trust in the unknown. And I won't lie to you, the process has been really painful. It's not been an easy time, and there are lots of other things that I just won't go into now. But as I let go of the expectations that I've had, I've suddenly stepped into a new calling and a new role that I couldn't even have imagined a year ago. And so in 26 days, on the 28th of July, at 10.45 a.m. in the morning, I will be moving to America. Woo! (laughs) Uh, I'm going to be interning at a church called Vintage Church in Los Angeles, helping them to run their Alpha course. And um, yeah, I really cannot express enough how out of my comfort zone this is for me. I really, really love my mum and dad. (laughs) I really, really love my siblings. I've got a little niece who I love a lot. I really love this church um, and I won't be here for like 10 months. So put it this way, that's a Christmas spectacular, right? And an Easter spectacular. Yeah, I'm I'm considering not going now. I think that's it. That's it. Um, But in all seriousness, this is really, for me, me stepping out of the boat. It's me saying, like, Jesus, if you're going to tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. And I'm not trying to sound all holy, like I've got it all figured out, because I really don't. Um, But it's just me saying, like, I'm going to place obedience at the center of everything that I do. And I'm going to let go of the comfortable and step into the calling. But you see, this did require a call from Jesus. And the call from Jesus allowed Peter to step out of the comfortable and into the unknown. And often in life, we really strive for comfort. I often hear people say, if I could just be comfortable, I'll be happy. Like when I've got the house and the kids and the partner, like then I'll be, you know, I'll be happy and and life will be good. But I don't want to, you know, Matt, Matt asked me to do an encouraging talk, and this might not sound that encouraging, but bear with me, okay? (laughs) Um, Jesus doesn't really offer us a comfortable life, but he does offer us a life filled with supernatural peace. You see, comfort often causes us to become complacent and to fear the call of God. Because when I'm in my boat, it's like, oh no, if God calls me out, I don't want to lose what I've got. I don't want to lose this life that I've built up. But you see, a life filled with the peace of God causes us to trust in the God who made us and who loves us and who has a plan for us. The author, C.S. Lewis, he wrote um, Narnia, uh, said, life with God is not immunity from difficulties, but peace within those difficulties. You see, Jesus doesn't always calm the storm, but he calls you out into it so that you can grow. And I wonder today what it would look like for you to step out into the unknown. And don't worry, it probably doesn't mean moving to America. I really wish it didn't for me. (laughs) But maybe it's changing careers. Maybe it's maintaining a friendship with somebody who's just like really annoying. You know, there's people that you're like, I'd rather just let them go. But God's like, no, keep hold of them. Maybe for you, it's joining a Bay team or a Bay group. I don't know what it is for you. But there is a calling for us to step out of the comfortable today. To not avoid the calling because of convenience, but to step out with courage. And if you're thinking, I don't know what my calling is. Well, ultimately, your calling as a follower of Jesus is to spread the good news of Jesus and tell people about him. And I wonder today what that would look like for you. Imagine what our bay would look like if everybody knew the good news of Jesus. Like, how would it change the places and the spaces that you inhabit? How would it change the interactions that you have with people? What would it look like in your life for you? And I want to acknowledge that some people today, this might be your first time in church. Or maybe you've been coming for some time and you're like, I don't really know where I'm at with this whole faith thing. Well, perhaps the unknown that Jesus is calling you into today is to follow him. Maybe that's the comfort that you're in. You're like, if I step out of that, then I have to sacrifice quite a lot. Well, maybe today it's, it's time to make that decision to put your life in his hands. To step out of the boat and say, okay, Jesus, I am all in for you today. But I know this sounds really scary. (laughs) And like I said, if I think too much about all of the things that could go wrong with America, I, I really begin to freak out. 
like the visas or the flight or the insurance or the fact that they have guns and things like that, you know, like it really begins to freak me out. It's also really expensive. So I don't know how my lifestyle is going to quite add up. I've lived in Cardiff, which is a very, very cheap city. Uh, and really, I begin to question the call. And that's what happens with Peter. You see, when Peter begins to focus more on the chaos of the storm than on Jesus and his call, he begins to sink. But Jesus catches him. Uh, when I was younger, this is really going to, some people come in here and they're like, your mom's such a good mom. And I'm like, she is. She's an amazing mom, right? But everybody makes mistakes. All right. So listen to this one. <laughs> When I was younger, my um, family went on a golf course trip. I don't really remember it. I was only two at this point, right? And I was on my trike. And trikes in those days weren't like they are now. You know, there was no brake, for starters. It was just like a pole, and it just sort of went. And then I had to decide whether I, which direction to go in, which was always fun when you were a kid. Um, and this golf course was on a hill, right? And at the end of the hill was a very, very steep cliff. Okay, yeah, there are some gasps in the room. And a classic third child, I've got two older siblings. Um, my parents were preoccupied helping the other two and so left me on the trike by myself. However, when they turned around, I wasn't there. I'd, I'd gone. And there was panic everywhere. Everyone was like, where's Abby gone? Where's Abby gone? She's gone, she's gone. But luckily, I just learned to talk. And so a, a quiet shout came, emerged, and it just said, help, help, I in the bushes, I in the bushes. And they rushed over to me, and yes, luckily I was rescued. No cliff fall for me that day. <laughs> but sometimes in life, I think we feel a little bit like this. We feel like we're just sort of freewheeling down a big hill and there's nobody to stop us and we don't know where we're gonna land and it all just feels a little bit scary. We feel we've been forgotten about, like we're in the bushes, stuck in the unknown, we are alone and afraid. But you see, when Peter begins to doubt and sink, Jesus doesn't leave him. No, instead, he get, reaches out a hand and gets him back into the boat. He doesn't let him sink but he helps him. And you may not always feel the presence of God in your situation, but know that he is always with you. See, in the book of Hebrews, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so know today that the same God who reached out and saved Peter is the same God who will guide you through the unknown. See, Jesus doesn't lead us into storms and then leave us. No, instead, he leads us into storms and stays there with us. You see, God's timing is often designed to teach us to trust him. And not just to trust him with a little bit, but to fully trust him with our whole lives. See that in both the mountains and the valleys, when life is easy and when it's really, really hard, and when the storm comes, we can trust God. Why? Well, because if he's done it before, he will do it again. You see, Jesus is with you. And when we choose to focus on Jesus and not the waves, there is peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that confuses the world. You see, Jesus is not dependent upon our current circumstances our current circumstances. Whatever you're going through, it doesn't, it doesn't define what Jesus can do. He's not dependent upon the people that we follow. No, no, he's dependent upon his integrity. And he has integrity. He's a God who will not leave you, not forsake you, but who loves you and who has a plan for you. He's a God that even in the storm holds your hand and doesn't let you go. He's a God who carries you when you don't have the strength and comforts you when you need him. God will not leave you. He holds your hand. He is always on time, sometimes when you're not. And when the storm comes and the waves feel bigger than God, just know that your God is so much bigger than those waves. That he will drag you out of them and hold your hand through it all. And I'll often hear it said that if it comes from God, it should be easy, right? Like, it should be easy if it comes from God. 
And I completely disagree. I don't think it was easy for Peter to step out, but he did it anyway. See, following the call of God is not always easy, but it always leads to a fulfilled life. See, earlier on in the Bible, uh, there's another sort of uh, miracle that Jesus does where he calms another storm for the disciples. And in this, uh, Jesus is asleep and the disciples start to panic and they're like, ah, no, we're all going to die. Uh, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a common theme within the Gospels of like the disciples freaking out. Um, and then Jesus calms the storm like straight away. He's just like calm and it calms. And they're all like shocked. And he's like, who do you say I am? And the disciples are like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But you see here, after the miracle, Jesus doesn't even have to ask the question because the disciples know who it is. They say, surely this is the son of God. You see, Jesus didn't allow the disciples to go through the storm for no reason, but he allowed it for them to receive the revelation that they needed. Therefore, be assured today that when Jesus calls us out into the unknown, into these uncomfortable places, he not only holds our hand through it all, but he also brings purpose to it. What you are going through today is not by accident. It's not purposeless. See, I'm really nervous about LA. Everyone, you say LA and everyone's like, oh, it sounds so fun. I'm like, it does sound fun, but it's also really far away. You see, it's really out of my comfort zone. I honestly really have no idea why I'm going. It's not, you know, it's not really my vibe. It's not, do you know what I mean? I don't really know why I'm doing it. Um, well, I do. <laughs> and it's because I have full confidence in a God who's called me out of the comfortable and who pushes me to trust in the unknown. And he holds my hand through it all and he gives me purpose. See, today I want you to be challenged, to step out, to be reassured that Jesus is with you in the chaos and trust that he will bring purpose to whatever you are going through. Amen. Amen. Do you want to stand with me?